What's good, everybody? It's I Senpai here, and I'm finally, 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 finally able to show you guys my game. Carnatus Card Fighting System. Now, you might look at this program and go, Aya, what the hell is that? All right, let me tell you. First off, this is Tabletop Simulator, one of the best programs for prototyping a game. So if you are a game developer and you're trying to make a board game, a card game, or any other type of game, you need to be using Tabletop Simulator. So I highly recommend it, okay? This is the program we've been using to build this game, all right? Uh, well, not build it literally, but we, we've been using it to test and make sure that everything was above board before we get to the point where we're ready to put it in the build. Now, we are at that point. Uh, we are actually actively working on the build, and I want to be able to show that part to you as well. But right now, I want to introduce you to the game, and I want you to you know get a little bit of a glimpse at what's going to be coming up in the future, okay? So... Today is going to be an introduction into Cronatus. So I hope you're ready because we're going to be going over a good amount of stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, let's talk about the character card. The character card here, you can notice a few very important things about it. One, it has a health total. It has a name. Well, that would be kind of crappy if it didn't have a name because it's a character card. It has its own ability and has a reserve size. The health of your character is, of course, very important for two, for two reasons. One, you cannot go beyond your health total. So in other words, if I was to do some type of healing ability that would put me above 25 health for Amara, I can't do that. Number two, if your health goes to zero, you lose, like most games, okay? Um, one very important thing to note is that every character has a different health total. So it's not the same, okay? It's not the same. So example... Honeybow has 15 health, right? Sabelle has 20 health. Amara has 25 health, okay? And this is kind of being used as a balancing agent to for certain strategies, like certain characters are really fast and hit really hard, or I'm sorry, hit, do like multiple chain combos and this and the other, which is, you know, kind of what Honeybow is, but we'll talk about characters at another time. So it's kind of like a balancing agent. So every character has variable health, but it's usually in, in very, um, in, Divisibles of five, so it's usually in fives. Okay, so the next thing is each character has their own ability. All right, uh, Amara's yeah, allows her to become stronger. Certain characters allow them to draw more cards during a turn. Other characters just do different things. Okay, and then you've got your reserve size. Your reserve size is the number, of, the maximum amount of cards that you have in your hand during a turn. Okay, so I can have up to six cards in my hand. And during the draw phase, I always draw up to my reserve size. So I always draw up to my reserve size. Um, if it's during my opponent's turn, it's during their draw phase, then I draw up to half of my reserve size. So if, as examples, if I have, if, if it's my turn, and I would draw up to my full reserve size of six. If I have one card in my hand, I would draw five cards. If I have two cards in my hand, I would draw uh, two, four cards, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And if it's during my opponent's turn, and I have one card in my hand. Since I only draw the half of my reserve size, I would draw two cards because they put me at three. Okay. So, and if for some reason you would have like a reserve size of five or anything like that, then you would it's rounded up. So you would still draw three cards. Okay. If you're if you're the defending player, if it's your opponent's turn. All right. So that is the reserve size. Um, again, it's a very important, very important thing about the game. Okay. Uh, now you might see these little spaces here on the grid, all right, on this grid here. And this is essentially how you play the game, all right? The actual digital game would look very different than this, but this kind of just gives you an idea, all right? Uh, and we'll go over the grid here in a second. But each space here, on the, well, actually, let's talk about it now. Each space on the grid represents one second. And so you have a total of seven, so you have a total of seven seconds. I just somehow got tongue-tied saying that. So you have a total of uh, seven seconds to be able to initiate all of your attacks, all right? Let's go ahead and look at some of the cards. Uh, so this card is a basic battle card. Basic battle cards can go into any player's deck, any character's deck. It doesn't matter. It's not, there's no restriction. You can have a maximum of three cards of the same name in your deck, okay? Uh, there are some exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, the general rule is that you can have a maximum of three cards uh, of the same name in your deck. All right. So you'll notice on the right hand side, there is the strength value, which is how much damage the card will do to the opponent when it hits them. And then you've got the time span. 
the time span is essentially how many intervals it takes when it's being used. So for instance, let's say I wanted to attack my opponent with this tornado slam. I would place it on this second interval here, okay? Because this is counted one space and then this would count as two. And if I wanted to attack my opponent with say another card afterwards, it would take up that amount of spaces. So let's say I wanted to attack with another tornado slam. Then I would place it that many spaces away from the last attack. So it'd be one, so this is one space and then two, okay? So this would mean I have three time span or t uh, intervals remaining. And then if I wanted to attack with say a spinning roundhouse, then I could do that. Okay, hopefully this all makes sense. There will be a more in-depth tutorial at another time, but this uh, I'm just kind of breezing right through. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the special battle cards. Special battle cards are very similar to basic battle cards, and they tend to have stats very much like this one. Uh, it has a strength of two, a time span of four, and it has its own special ability like most cards do. Uh, the difference between a special battle card and a basic battle card is that a special battle card can only be used by the player or by the character that it, they own it, that owns it. So in other words, Amara can only use Amara's cards. Fothea can only use Fothea's cards, etc. etc. There's no mixing and matching of these cards. All right. And so each of these characters, um, they all have their own special battle cards. So they won't be mixing and matching those, but they will be able to use, they can interchange the basic battle cards. And there'll be a lot of basic battle cards that come out. These are just the basic starter decks, okay? Each of these over here are the starter decks for the game. Every, there's uh, nine total characters as of right now. There may be one additional, uh, we haven't quite decided yet, but there will be nine total uh, starter decks uh, when you know, for people to mess around with, with the game. Uh, They'll be that. So anyway, moving on. Okay. And then there's a, a very unique type of card. Of, and this is your third type of card in the game. So you have your character cards and you had your battle cards. Your third type of card in the game is going to be uh, your action card. Let me uh, pull out this action card. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. So an action card is a card that allows you to... It, it's a... You can use it as your turn action. So instead of attacking your opponent, and there's like several different turn actions, which I'll cover in the next video. There's several different turn actions. And so you can play an action card during your turn to kind of replace one of those turn actions. It takes up your entire turn, but action cards usually do a really, really powerful ability. Okay. So that's basically Cronatus uh, in a nutshell, the, very, the introduction to the game. In the next video, I'll talk about uh, some of the more in-depth mechanics to the game, such as the keywords and the traits that some of the cards may have. And I'll even talk about, uh, you know, a few other things related to the project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the song uh, because this song is actually one of the songs in our game. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the song. And I look forward to sharing more with you about the game. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe because why not? <laughs> so. Uh, this is I Senpai signing out. Again, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more information on Cronatus. Also, make sure to check out our Twitter. We do regular posts uh, showing different things with the game. And so you can get all that information. With that, I'm out. Peace.